the history of Exadata and the platform is, is really unique. And from my vantage point, it started earlier this century as a skunk works inside of Oracle called Project Sage, back when grid computing was the next big thing. Oracle saw that betting on standard hardware would put it on an industry curve that would rapidly evolve. And I remember the Oracle HP database machine, which was announced at Oracle Open World almost 15 years ago, and then Exadata kept evolving. After the Sun acquisition, it became a platform that had tightly integrated hardware and software. And today, Exadata, it keeps evolving, almost like a chameleon to address more workloads and reach new performance levels. Last April, for example, Oracle announced the availability of Exadata X9M in OCI, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, and it introduced the ability to run the autonomous database service or the Exadata database service. You know, Oracle often talks about, they call it stock exchange performance level, kind of no description needed and, and sort of related capabilities. The company, as we know, is fond of putting out benchmarks and comparisons with previous generations of product and sometimes competitive products that underscore the progress that's being made with Exadata, such as 87% more IOPS with metrics for latency measured in microseconds, mics instead of milliseconds, and many other numbers that are industry leading and compelling, especially for mission critical workloads. One thing that hasn't been as well publicized is that Exadata on OCI is using AMD's EPYC processors in the database service. EPYC is not Eastern Pacific Yacht Club for all you sailing buffs, rather it stands for Extreme Performance Yields Computing, the enterprise grade version of AMD's Zen architecture, which has been a linchpin of AMD's success in terms of penetrating enterprise markets. And to focus on the innovations that AMD and Oracle are bringing to market, we have with us today Juan Loiza, who's Executive Vice President of Mission Critical Technologies at Oracle, and Mark Papermaster, who's the CTO and EVP of Technology and Engineering at AMD. Juan, welcome back to the show. Mark, great to have you on theCUBE in your first appearance. Thanks for coming on. Yep, happy to be here. Thank you. All right, Juan, let's start with you. You've been on theCUBE a number of times, as I said, and, and you've talked about how Exadata is a you know, top platform for Oracle Database. We've covered that extensively. What's different and unique from your point of view about Exadata Cloud Infrastructure X9M on OCI? Yeah, so as you know, Exadata, it, it's designed top down to be the best possible platform for database. Uh, and it has a lot of unique capabilities, like we make extensive use of RDMA, smart storage. We take advantage of you know, everything we can in the leading uh, hardware platforms. And X9M is our next generation platform, and it does exactly that. We're always wanting to be to get all the best that we can from the available hardware that uh, our partners like AMD produce. And so that's what x 9 is. is. It's, it's faster, more capacity, lower latency, more IOs, pushing the limits of the hardware technology. So we don't want to be the limit, the software, the database software should not be the limit. It should be uh, the actual physical limits of the hardware. And that, that's what x 9 is all about. Why won AMD chips in X9M? Uh, yeah, so we're we're uh, introducing uh, AMD chips. We think they provide outstanding performance, uh, both for OLTP and for analytic workloads. And it's really that simple. We just think the performance is outstanding in the product. Yeah, Mark, you, your career is quite amazing. I've been around long enough to remember the transition to CMOS from emitter coupled logic in the mainframe era back when you were at IBM. That was an epic technology call at the time. I, I was of course steeped as an analyst at IDC in the PC era and like, like many witnessed the tectonic shift that Apple's iPod and iPhone caused. And the timing of you joining AMD is quite important in my view because it coincided with the year that PC volumes peaked and marked the beginning of what I, what I call the stagflation period for x86. I could riff on history for hours, but let's focus on the Oracle relationship. Mark, what are the relevant capabilities and, and key specs of the AMD chips that are used in Exadata X9M on Oracle's cloud? Well, thanks. And, and uh, it, it's really uh, the basis of, I think, the great partnership that we uh, have with Oracle on Exadata X9M, and, it, and that is that the uh, AMD technology uses our third generation of Zen processor. Zen was you know, architected to really bring high performance you know, back to x86, a very, very strong roadmap uh, that we've executed, you know, on schedule to our commitments. And this third generation does all of that. It uses a seven nanometer CPU, 
that is a, a you know core that was designed to really bring uh, throughput, uh, bring uh, you know really high uh, efficiency uh, to computing. Uh, and just deliver raw capabilities. And so uh, for uh, Exadata X9M, uh, it's really leveraging all of that. It's it's a uh, uh, implemented in up to 64 cores uh, per socket. It's got uh, you know really uh, anywhere from 128 to 168 uh, PCIe Gen 4 I/O connectivity. So you can you can really attach uh, you know all of the uh, the, the necessary uh, infrastructure and and uh, storage uh, that's needed uh, for exadata performance and also memory. You have to feed the beast uh, for those analytics and for the OLTP that Juan was talking about. And so it does have eight lanes of memory uh, for high performance DDR4. So it's really as a balanced processor and it's implemented in a way to really uh, optimize uh, high performance. That that is our whole focus of uh, AMD. It's where we've you know reset the company focus on years ago. And uh, again, uh, you know, great to see uh, you know the the super smart uh, you know database team at Oracle really a partner with us, understand those capabilities, and uh, it's been uh, just great to uh, partner with them to uh, uh, you know to uh, you know enable uh, Oracle uh, to really leverage the capabilities of the Zen processor. Yeah, it's been a pretty amazing 10 or 11 years for both companies. But Mark, how, how specifically are you working with Oracle at the engineering and product level? You know, and what does that mean for your joint customers in terms of what they can expect from the collaboration? Well, here, here's where the collaboration really comes to play. You think about a processor and, you know, I, I'll, I'll say, you know, when Juan's team first looked at it, there's general benchmarks and the benchmarks are impressive, but they're general benchmarks. And, you know, and, and they uh, showed, you know, the, I'll say the, you know, the base processing capability, but the partnership comes to bear uh, when it, when it means optimizing for the workloads that Exadata X9M is really delivering to the end customers. And that's where we dive down. And, and as we uh, learn from the Oracle team, we learn to understand where bottlenecks could be? Uh, where uh, is there tuning that we could, in, in, fa in fact, uh, really boost the performance above, the, I'll say, that baseline that you get in the generic benchmarks? And that's what the teams have done. So, for instance, uh, you look at, uh, you know, optimizing latency uh, to RDMA. Uh, you look at uh, just throughput, optimizing throughput on OLTP and uh, database processing. When you go through the workloads and you take the traces and you break it down and you find uh, the areas that are bottlenecking, and then you can adjust. We have, you know, thousands of uh, parameters that can be adjusted for a given workload. And that's, again, that's the beauty of the partnership. So we have the expertise on the CPU engineering. Uh, you know, Oracle uh, Exadata team knows innately uh, what the customers need uh, to get the, the most out of their platform. And when the teams came together, we actually achieved anywhere from 20 percent to 50 percent gains on specific workloads is really exciting to see so okay so so I, I want to follow up on that is that different from the competition how are you driving customer value you mentioned some you know some some percentage improvements are you measuring primarily with with latency how, how do you look at that well uh, you know we are differentiated with the uh, in, in the number of factors we bring a higher core Density. We bring the highest uh, core density, uh, certainly in, in uh, x86. And, and moreover, what we've led the industry is how to scale those cores. Uh, we have a very high performance fabric that connects those together. So as, as a customer needs more cores, again, we scale anywhere from eight to 64 cores. But what the trick is uh, that as you add more cores, you want the scale, the scale to be as close to linear as possible. Uh, and so that's a differentiation we have, uh, and we enable that uh, again with that balanced computer of CPU, I/O, and memory uh, that we design. But the key is, uh, you know, we pride ourselves at AMD of being able to partner uh, and in a very deep fashion with our customers. Uh, we listen very well. I think that's uh, what we've had the opportunity uh, to do with uh, Juan and his team. We appreciate that, and and that is how we got. Uh, the kind of performance benefits that I described earlier. It's working together almost like one team uh, in, uh, in bringing that best possible capability uh, to the end customers. Great, thank you for that. Juan, I want to come back to you. Can both 
the Exadata database service and the autonomous database service, can they take advantage of Exadata cloud X9M capabilities that are in that platform? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, autonomous is basically our self-driving version of the Oracle database, but fundamentally it is the same uh, database core. So both of them will take advantage of the tremendous performance that we're getting now. You know, when, when Mark talks about 64 cores, that's per chip. We have two chips, you know, it's a two socket server. So it's a 128 way processor. And then from our point of view, there's two threads. So from the database point, there's 200, it's a 256 way processor. Uh, and so there's a lot of raw performance there. And we've done a lot of work with the AMD team to make sure that we deliver that to our customers for all the different kinds of workload, including OLTP analytics, but also including for our autonomous database. So yes, absolutely. All it takes advantage of it. Now, Juan, you know, I can't let you go without asking you about the competition. I've written extensively about the big four hyperscale clouds, specifically AWS, Azure, Google, and Alibaba. And I know that don't hate me, sometimes it angers some of my friends at Oracle, IBM too, that I don't include you in that list, but, but I see Oracle specifically as, as different and, and really the cloud for the most demanding applications and, and top performance databases, not the commodity cloud, which of course that angers all my friends at those four companies. So <laughs> I'm ticking everybody off. So how does Exadata Cloud Infrastructure X9M compare to the likes of AWS, Azure, Google, and other database cloud services in terms of OLTP and analytics, value, performance, cost, however you want to frame it. Yeah, so our architecture is fundamentally different. Uh, we've architected our database for the scale out environment. So for example, we've moved intelligence in the storage. Uh, we've put uh, remote direct memory access. We've put persistent memory into our product. So we've done a lot of architectural changes that they have and you're starting to see a little bit of that. Like if you look at some of the things that Amazon and Google are doing, they're starting to realize that, hey, if you're going to achieve good results, you really need to push some database uh, processing into the storage. So, so they're taking baby steps toward that, you know, you know roughly 15 years after we've, we've had a product. Um, and again, at some point, they're going to realize you really need RDMA. You really need, you know, more uh, direct access to those capabilities. So, so they're slowly getting there, but you know, we're well ahead. And what, you know, the way this is delivered is you know, better availability, better performance, lower latency, higher IOPS. So, uh, and this is why our customers love our product. And you know, if, you, if you look at uh, the global Fortune 100, uh, over 90% of them are running exit data today. And even in, in our cloud, uh, you know, over 60% of the global 100 are running Exadata in the Oracle cloud because of all the differentiated uh, benefits that they get uh, from the product. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're well ahead in the, in the database space. Mark, last question for you is how do you see this relationship evolving in the future? Can you share a little roadmap uh, for the audience? You bet. Well, well first off, uh, you know, given the deep partnership that we've had on Exadata X9M, uh, it, it's, really allowed us to inform our future design. So uh, in our current uh, third generation Epic EPYC is uh, that is really uh, what we call our Epic ser server offerings. And it's a 7003 third gen in, in uh, Exadata X9M. So what about fourth gen? Well, fourth gen is well underway, uh, you know, it, and, uh, and uh, you know, ready to, you know, for the, for the future, but it incorporates learning uh, that we've done in, in partnership with, with Oracle. Uh, it's going to have even more through capabilities. It's going to have expanded memory capabilities because there's a CXL uh, Connect Express link that'll expand even more memory opportunities. And I could go on. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's the beauty of a deep partnership as it enables us to really take that learning going forward. It pays forward. And uh, we're very excited to, uh, uh, to uh, fold all of that into our, our future generations and provide even uh, better capabilities to Juan and his team moving forward. Yeah, you guys have been you know, obviously very forthcoming. You have to be with, with, with Zen and Epic. Juan, anything you'd like to add as closing comments? Yeah, I, I would say that in the processor market, there's been a real acceleration in innovation in the last few years. Um, there was, you know, a big move 10, 15 years ago when multi-core processors came out. And then, you know, we were on that for a while and then things started stagnating. But in the last two or three years, uh, and AMD has been leading this, um, there's been a dramatic uh, acceleration in innovation in this space. So it's, it's very exciting to be part of this and, and customers are getting a big benefit from this. 
All right, Chance, hey, thanks for coming back in theCUBE today. Really appreciate your time. Thanks, glad to be here. All right, and thank, thank you. you for watching this exclusive CUBE conversation. This is Dave Vellante from theCUBE, and we'll see you next time.